Well, good morning, guys. It's Thursday, the 22nd of December. Uh, not long to Christmas. Pretty special day because this is the final of this series of the, the 31-7 Chrysler 6-volt radio. So, how are we going to go? Well, let's just work through the video and I'll show you some of the final stuff that we had to do, some of the things that were, you know, a bit, bit ordinary, but the end result, well, I'll let you make up your mind. Okay, let's have a look. We've now got this filter choke to repair out of this old girl. So it's open circuit between these two, even though the wires actually look spot on. I don't know where it's broken or burnt out or what's ever happened. Lots of rust. Um, I've taken him out of his container and he had laminations across the bottom. It's a standard E-type configuration with the, the former. Now I'm hoping to tap all this and somehow get these laminations out of the former so that I can uh, have a look in here and, and find out what's going on. Rewind him if necessary, um, fix it up however it's got to be fixed up. So that's where we're up to at the moment with this little fella. We'll try and get some of these out and um, just see how we go here. It's fairly rusty. Now at the moment what I'm doing is um, I've got him on a hot plate, just heating it. Um, excuse the rain, it's pouring rain here at the moment and this workshop isn't um, sound friendly. Heating him up so that maybe we can get the for former to release a little bit from the, um, from the laminations. Very tight, it's corroded, so... We'll see how this goes. Just not real sure how this is going to work. But we'll try it out. And we'll try this out and see how this works. He's just starting to warm up there nicely now. By the way, very handy device. I use this little hot plate for so many things. For gentle heating um, with um, with vintage radio um, a great add-on it is almost as handy as me soldering iron I can um, you can also um, remove components with this uh, surface mount by heating the board and and so forth but um, yeah it's got lots of other uses just starting to warm up nicely Okay guys, well it looks like 
this is going to have to come off like um, the brake or the burn or whatever is probably in the center now I have a solder dispenser here with the shaft in it I've built him up with a bit of insulation tape in the center there so that this can run like so to unwind the wire because I don't have a coil winder or anything onto a, an old solder spool with a with a cordless drill so I'll make up something here that can go into the chuck of the drill and then we can just unwind the wire onto this fella and um, see where the break is okay guys do you want to see something fancy here not really a lathe and it's not really a coil winder I don't know what you'd call it but anyway I think it'll do the job I think famous last words okay we've got oh, I don't know 50 turns probably and we've come to the break so now it's a matter of uh, does this end of the wire contact our other other end there so can we get continuity there no uh, we still don't have any okay it's back to the drawing board and keep unwinding well guys the choke yes the wire was broke in several locations after we've uh, taken it off it had corrosion the copper had corroded through in probably 20 or 30 spots so we had to totally unwind now we're looking at rewinding and um, it's just a choke so it's pretty straightforward it's we'll just solder on one end and I'll do a the very crude job that I have here seeing I don't have a coil winder put that on there stick it in the drill and we'll wind him on so doesn't have to be as critical as a transformer as i said it is only a choke and uh, well as long as we get the um the correct inductance at the end so we'll we'll check the inductance and see how we go when i get this wound i won't record this it's a fairly straightforward job of watching this go around and around and i'm sure you guys have seen this a million times before so we'll come back when i get him wound the Chrysler well so far as you probably see a little bit um, earlier in the video I've rewound the choke now we needed 700 and uh, 720 milli Henry and I got 710 so I'm pretty pretty close with the wiring had to use a little bit more wire because we um, we had 1.8 mil and the original wire was um, only one mil. It's rated at 100 milliamps now and not the 60 milliamp that it was originally, so that's good. I bought the terminals out the top of it, so it uh, makes it easier to check voltages, so forth, and, uh, yeah, the whole thing is a little bit easier to work on. Cleaned these fellas up checked everything and we've refitted them the valve bases the valve shield bases we've put them back in so it's looking pretty smick actually so the thing to do now is uh, first of all i'll just give you a little bit of a rundown on what i did with the choke and how i rewound it uh, I'm no professional on winding coils, um, but that is very, very close to doing its job. It shouldn't be a problem. So, um, yeah, I'm, I have, I've have i got very little coil winding gear. So, okay, we're back with this fella. I've refitted our volume control, the switches, and virtually uh, put this choke in. I, uh, this is your uh, low tension choke on the uh, six volt line to the vibrator. 
so I'm pretty pretty sure um, that's it. All tests okay. Everything appears to be working fine with it. And from now on, I guess um, the next thing I'll be recording bits and pieces of this will be fitting this fella, fitting the um, tuning gang and coils. So I've just got to round up a couple of grommets, new grommets. Now, the original grommets with these had a little bit smaller hole than, than these fellas. These are new ones. And our, well, they had little spaces in them. And these are uh, a little bit too so big. So going to work out what I can do there to either put a, big, a little bit bigger spacer in or um, find some grommets with a smaller hull. So we'll cruise along, do that, and then we're almost up to the vibrator, which goes in here. Once again, uh, same setup with the grommets uh, with the little spaces inside them. So I need to do something with both these. Okay, we'll do that now and come back shortly. What I've found is some little plastic spaces. They should do the job, three of those, and they actually fit neatly, just neatly inside those grommets. So I'm pretty sure they will be okay. And this is actually starting to look like a radio again. And that looks good. That should do the job. I suppose it's never really straightforward when we're doing electronic stuff. What happened was um, this is a 6AN7 socket. We were putting, soldering some wires onto the pins and one of the pins just just there broke off so yes it was what do I do do uh, I, I'll have to replace the socket so I removed all the components around it and we've put in a ceramic socket which I had uh, that's actually new old stock and had to drill a couple of holes where it went onto the plate underneath. Of um, It's an adapter plate from the old 8-pin um, to take the 9-pin. It had been put in uh, possibly when this was made. So just uh, didn't line up, of course. Every, everything always doesn't play ball. So have put him in there. And on the other side... You can see that that's how he is. So just about to uh, wire in our 6AN7 and then hopefully we can get on with putting this thing together. Strange how there's always something that will all of a sudden jump out, you, jump out at you and hold up the build. But anyway... We'll do that and come back to it. Well, guys, we're getting a little bit closer, a fair bit closer. Mounted him, got the vibrator mounted up, choke mounted up, all ready to go. What I've done here is put in a power cable, which is just a battery cable, positive, negative. Aerial and earth, seeing this radio has no earth, I'm not sure what effect that will have on our reception and interference, but um, it had an earth on it, so we're putting that back on. I have the audio transformer temporarily plugged in, have our speaker here. Now underneath, Ariel goes to that point there, which is our white wire. Our ground wire, of course, is ground, chassis ground, just as as it was. The the band switch assembly 
is actually has a piece of braid from there to ground. Now that's the only ground that I can find on this. I'm not sure whether it needs the second ground, but it's something. It wasn't on it when I took it apart. Six A and seven all wired in. Power cable over here, and the positive positive lead going to our choke, which in turn goes up around here to our on-off switch. First position, radio on. Second position, radio on, plus dial lights. So I haven't got the dial lights or anything wired in at the moment. First of all, I think I'll connect our six volts and we'll do some checking of the HTs. Uh, of course, no valves in at the moment. Now, this power supply is also current limited to 2.5 amps. So... Um, there's nothing drastic can happen here. I don't have a speaker hooked up because we don't have the audio output tube in there at the moment. Turn him on. And he's buzzing. Okay, which is good. Straight away, we will check our HT, which that fella there is our 400 volt 10 mic. And we have 185 volts, 186. This is unloaded, of course. That is pretty nice. That's coming straight out of our vibrator, which is this point here, which is 185 volts. Going in, 6.3 at the moment from the power supply. We have a filter cap down here, which is on the mains, uh, the um, mains, the battery input positive, which it should be a 6.3, which it is. So after it goes through a couple of chokes, this choke here, that this first fella and this fella. Right. So now we should have, I have the transformer plugged in. So we have HT. HT coming to that point there, and other side, we have 189. That's a very good sign. That's the plate of um, our 1L6, I think it is, our output tube. So that means our audio transformer is fine. We have other voltages here, but of course, everything's unloaded. No valves in there at the moment. So our HT... All looks correct. We can put the switch over further, and that just enables these wires here, which is 6.3. If I take that off in the middle, voltage there, 6.3, to each of the dial lights either side. And, of course, if you're running off a battery, um, a little bit tricky to um, just have the dial lights running for no obvious reason, so just using using battery okay it might be time for the valves so um, first of all we'll put in our output tube and the detector and we'll see what's going on and uh, just see can we get any audio out of our line input here which um, which actually goes to our volume pot so we'll see can we get any sort of activity from him. I'm not sure of the filament string here, so um, we'll have a look on the diagram. We'll have a look at that now and work out where the filament string runs.
Okay, everything's hooked up. We have um, our power. Speakers hooked up. I have, don't have an aerial on it at the moment. We're just going to see what happens here. Right. Now, all these valves are, um, these fellas have tested okay. I haven't actually tested the 6AN7 at the moment, but we'll, we'll see how everything goes. Right. We're away. We do have audio. We don't, don't have very much on the IFs. So we do have audio there. The actual 6, that's 6A and 7. It's a little bit sus, sus because I haven't actually checked him. It's very cold. And I can't actually see any, any heater there. But anyway, now the 6A and 7 has 130 on the plate, 122 on the grid, 122. That should be about 80. This is the control grid. Um, it should be about 80 on that, actually. And cathode, 0 0.3, 0 0.3. Uh, this valve, this is not conducting. That 6AN7 is dead cold. Our 6AN7. Going to check the filaments on him actually. Now, um, three and four on this fellow. Now it's four and five on the six A and seven. So we'll check the meter. One, two, three, four, and five. Gives us 23 meg. That's a fairly high ohms reading for a filament, isn't it? Okay. Hmm. I think we've got an open circuit here. There's a, another 6AN7 here. Four, five. And we're looking at 3.3 ohms. We have an open circuit, 6 6 AN7. This is probably as a result of this radio having once again way too much voltage initially, and it's taken the filament out on this because this is a 6 volt radio, not 12, not 240. So it's probably taken out the filament. So we might get some action out of it if we. Replace the 6A and 7. See how that works now. Let's see, can we get any noise now? Turn him on. Vibrator's going. Wait for him to, wait for the 6 volt valve to heat. And... We seem to have some noise. Look at that. We even have a station. Wow, this is... We're going... We have another station up here. Yes. So where are we at there as far as the youngsters coming through or the development program? And we have shortwave. Is that uh, 
stating the obvious We're working. the unknown. Wow. <laughs> Oh, wow. I've got to find that question you asked John Lamar. Oh, that's right. Barcelona? Oh, Sorry, I was better than the phone. Ariel. <laughs> if Zoe could find that before that. Okay. Our 31-7 31, is now running. I don't know if you guys can hear the vibrator. But he's running. Running nicely. <laughs> Fair call. It's, uh, there's some real radio. You've got Miles working on too many stations. He doesn't even know what he's on at the moment. And we have Tone. Joining us for the first time. Yes, I know. Oh. Tone's working nicely. Or does he know which day it is? The volume control's working lovely. Our on off switch is working lovely. And the band switch is working. And we do have some sort of short wave. Um, this this is pretty amazing. Okay, we'll do a little bit more of um, um, checking, just voltages, so forth. But um, the thing is working, and then I guess it's alignment time. We'll do um, AM first, and then we'll get onto the short wave. But there it is, guys. It's this is a big thing for me. This is. This is amazing. This year's working. Absolutely beautiful. We'll leave this part of the project and then we'll get on with the alignment. I'll get some gear set up and we'll um, do a bit of read up on the manual of what's got to be done and give him a little bit of alignment. Well, good morning, boys and girls. Or mainly boys, I suppose, but I do see a couple of females following the channel, which is great to see. So uh, a big thank you to all the subscribers out there that's following me along. And, um, yeah, it's it's good to see that um, we can share our electronic knowledge, especially with things like this. It's an ongoing thing, this one. We're going to finish it up with this video. Now, I've gone ahead and put the front panel on and I didn't record doing the dial string honestly it took me half a day I think to get this bloody dial string as good as we could get it it, it is it appears to be correct um, I have probably seven service manual instructions on how to string this cord and not one of them are the same as this one. So it was work it out, try and string it. I don't know how many times I thought I had it right, only to find out the string was running back the front. Hence, 500 kilohertz was up this end, not this end. So, yeah. All seems to run nicely. It's moving there quite nicely. And I would have liked to have recorded this, the dial cord for you, but it was just that mixed up. My temperament wasn't quite in the space of um, putting something like that on YouTube. So we didn't. Didn't bother with that one. I've sprayed the front. Now, originally, this this front is a uh, red, furry paint substance. I don't know what it is. Perhaps um, I'd say David Tipton would know about this, I would say. I don't know how... Um, how they originally put that on. But anyway, we use a um, a, a reddish oxide colour. Seems to come out very, very nicely behind the uh, the glass. It's a, um, a rust inhibitor paint. I think it's Kill Rust range or something like that. So um, it's all nicely. I have repainted the pointer. Every, everything else 
is nearly nearly ready to go in a box. Underneath, still looks pretty well the same. The next pro progress on this one is the alignment, which we'll do next. Um, also, what I've got with the band switching and coils, once again, I've got seven manuals. None of them look the same as this. So just got to work out. We've got an AM aerial coil here. The um, the oscillator, um, oscillator trimmer is up here, but uh, shortwave, uh, I'm just not for real sure at the moment what this fella is. There's a slug to tune on this one. So I've just got to work this out and work out what what is what here. Otherwise, everything else is looking pretty good. The radio is performing unbelievable. It's, it's incredible. It's a very, very good performer. So our next job is to put him on the signal generator <coughs> and plug in our audio transformer to our speaker over there. The audio transformer, which is that fella, was mounted on the old speaker. Now, the old speaker was totally shot. We're going to have to replace that. We'll mount the transformer separately, possibly on this board. Um, I've This is the board that goes, uh, the speaker uh, mount that goes in the top of the radio. I have to cut this out yet. I'm not certain what speaker is going in here, so hence it's not cut at the moment. But I'm thinking of maybe mounting the transformer just to one side of that. Maybe an alternative also would be to mount it in the centre of the radio where there's quite an amount of room. So I'll see how we go there. We'll, we'll work this out very shortly. So, yeah, we'll see what happens. I would prefer that the transformer is separate away from the radio. That's how it was designed. It won't be back to original, this old girl, which is a shame. It's it's not going to be a total restoration. It's going to be, let's get it going. Let's make it as good as new, but a little bit different. So the paint works a little bit different. There's a few mods that we've done. Transformers, been, uh, the choke has been rewound. Just little things. So not quite a full restoration. But anyway, let's get on with it and let's do the alignment. We'll get things set up. Oh, also, what I have to do, dial glass. Dial glass, bit ratty along the bottom. It's got character, so we'll leave that as is. I'm not going to touch it too much. The paintwork along there is peeled in a few spots. There's a few dirty spots on here that I've got to attend to. And quite a few on the outside of the glass, just around. So we'll um, we'll just do a little bit of cleaning there. The glass mounts like so. We're going to have to mount this up. It also sits on two little feet here, which did have a little bit of rubber over it. So um, so it sits on those and. Um, I'll be putting a little bit of rubber there. Also on the sides that we have to that we have to um, set up is the two dial lights. Now these appear to sit here and clip over the front of the glass. So anyway, a few little things to do. We might take some little snippets of each of those small things and put them in the video. Okay, on with the alignment. Okay, we're set up. I have the um, signal generator going to the aerial through a 100 picofarad capacitor. Just at the moment, this is normally how I, I do them. I'm just 
turning back down a bit. Now, for this one, uh, we can see the meter there. So I will dis disconnect the speaker and just gone to a dummy load there. Gone to a dummy load. So we can see, we'll just increase our generator just a little bit there. And we can see what's going on. Okay, we'll grab the alignment tool. Righto, we'll start at the, our first IF transformer. Get our alignment tool. Hopefully he'll turn him okay. And try for a peak. By the way, we're on 455 kilohertz. So peak. Pretty good, actually. And around there. Right, we'll do underneath. Um, just got to rearrange a little bit of cabling here and uh, turn him around. It's as close as we're going to get. And we'll peak the bottom of the transformer. And I think I'll get myself another alignment tool. One's a bit bit small and a bit fragile. Right, now we're okay. There's basically our peak. Is there? That wasn't very far out at all. Right, on to the second one. This might be a very straightforward radio. Okay. About him, we'll do underneath. Gained a little bit there, but, but not much. Okay, transformer number three. This is very straightforward. Just take our generator up a little bit there to give us a bit better, bit better signal, so we can see what we're doing here. Okay, peak there, and the bottom. Bottom peak is pretty well there. Just do the top again. That's about it. That's about it, guys. So we can actually just put the heat gun on there a little bit and just um, just melt the wax into position. And 
probably the same underneath, so that um, the wax sets and doesn't cause any more hassles with it. Okay, um, we'll leave this, turn him back over, and work out our dial arrangement now. So we've got to put the dial on to be able to calibrate. We'll be back. Right, what we've found, a couple of little bits of heat shrink. Put over the ends of those. We'll shrink him on. Okay. And probably put another piece of heat shrink over the top to build build him up a little bit. Cut him off. That'll be good for the glass to sit on. Pretty. That'll be very good. Okay, we'll just clean the front of this glass. And we'll come back. Okay, so we're ready to put the glass on, but rather than putting it straight onto the metal, what I'm going to do is put some insulation tape down there, and that can go behind the glass. See better on this side. There, lovely, nice and firm, holding the glass, excellent. These fellas, they go a fairly crude way around the back. We'll attempt to try the same thing with this one. So what I've got here is just some sheath. Um, actually, I think it's off microphone cable, uh, stripped out. It's fairly pliable. And um, we'll just slice him along. Okay, we've, we've sliced him along a, a bit. Bring him out. And we cut a little bit out of him. Um, about two mil out of it. So then we're left with that little fella. Put him over the glass like so. Heating gently and I mean gently because you don't we don't need the, the cold glass cracking, that's for sure. Not at this stage of the game. Okay. Put this fella on. Here we go. Nice and firm. Same level as the other fella. Looks good. What we can do now is get back to the alignment procedure. Okay, not going to uh, bother too much with the short wave. Problem being, 
I just don't have enough information on the alignment procedure on this fella. I don't know which coil's which um, for the um, for the short wave. Not familiar with aligning these, so I'm just going to leave it. Get get more information. Meanwhile, AM appears to be working well. Um, 500 kilohertz, 1600 kilohertz lines up fine on the dial, which is really good. We will now wire in the two dial lamps. We've just got a ground, which goes to ground up here. And this fella comes down to the power switch, which turns the dial lamps on and off. So we'll do that next. Two dial lamps, little screw jobs, 6.3 volt lamps. We'll um, put the radio on, wait till he warms up a little bit, make sure everything's right. Okay, we'll go the second position on the switch, which should turn these fellas on. So let's screw him up and see if he works. Oh. Look at that, all working. And do the same with this fella, and he works as well. Excellent. We're shining along the dial. Actually, the dial, the dial is lit fairly well at the edges. There's not a lot darker in the center, but I mean, not much we can do about that. That's that's how this is made, these old girls. And and she's certainly working nicely. We go back one click. We stay on. We go one more. It's off. One click. We're on. Two clicks. Dial lamp. Excellent. All working. Right. We'll glue these wires into place just uh, to keep them from moving around. Next job, we're onto the case and the speaker mount. So this job is pretty well complete. Never thought I'd see this day. Okay, let's move on. We're using um, an oval speaker in this one. Reason, because as you saw earlier in the video, the, the poor old girl was just, it was a mess. It was just rusted and so forth. And yeah, it wasn't worth putting in. So there is no way it could have been resurrected. So I've made the new piece of board, as you just saw. I've put the baffles on this board so that when it goes in, your baffles come up against the case and you've got some form of a um, speaker box or the dual throat, as they call this one. Right, so that's done in the cabinet. I've uh, 
started the resurrection uh, of the poor old case. Uh, she needs a bit more polish on it in areas. Yes, I have that little red piece that broke off there of the Chrysler name, which um, I'll be super gluing back on. Because this radio is really not up to scratch with a, a full restoration, I'm going to use some red cloth. It just comes out quite nicely in the Bakelite, and, um, yeah, it, it will look quite good. Uh, the tortoise shell... Um, He's still in very good order, so it's a matter of cleaning it and polishing him up. Now, the radio itself, um, we were speaking about, uh, talking about the speaker there. So I shall grab this. Now, because the speaker, because the speaker is this time the mount on the other speaker for the output transformer was so rusted and I thought, well, we can't put it on this. We can't mount it on this. I did think of mounting it beside it, but I don't want anything else on that. So what I ended up doing, best way of showing is this, was mounting the transformer in here. So there's our speaker leads. I've picked up the two screws on either side there from the choke that's underneath, the uh, low-voltage choke. I've just put some screws in there and, and um, picked him up. So, yeah, now now he's got the, um, the speaker transformer mounted on. It's all wired in. Now, the high-voltage wire is the red and blue, comes down here and is soldered onto the speaker socket, which was the original plug for the transformer on the speaker. So just soldered him straight on there, up to here. And, um, yeah, I, th I think this will be fine. I really don't think this will give any problems here. Being fully shielded, there shouldn't be any in interaction between this transformer and this one because of the cover. If there was two there together, we'd have to oppose phase one of them, but we don't have to in this case. Okay, there's a bit of an update, so now we'll get on to putting some grill cloth in and mounting the speaker in the cabinet. Okay, the top, well, she's come up pretty well, actually. A lot of polishing and, and that, but um, yeah, uh, this has come up pretty nice. We've got our red cloth in behind there, which looks pretty nice. Well, I think it does. And look, we've actually fixed the Chrysler sign. I found the little red piece missing off the bottom of the K. Inside, spray glue, material. The tortoise shell is actually six little dabs of Celastic in there just to, just to hold him in, can be taken out in the future if necessary, polished very, very gently because it just wants to uh, crack. It, it it did crack in half, actually, across the centre, but super glue fixed that up, and it's looking pretty damn nice, I think. Um, so I hope all this is going to be worth it. We'll see. The bottom. Nice inside, looks great. Bottom, yes, she's come up pretty well. Even though it says 11-7 on there, uh, unfortunately it's, um, it's not an 11-7, it's a 31-7. Um, so 
I've re- I've mounted some rubber feet um, that just just to make um, just to make it sit nicely on maybe some furniture and so forth. So that's it for that lot. Now, what else I've organised is the speaker. We've used the old baffle material, uh, the old wooden chunks that was in it, um, sanded them back. This looked pretty grotty when I first took it apart. So um, have them just screwed them in and he mounts in. He mounts in like so. Just get this in the right position. He mounts in like so. And that looks pretty smick. So this is the next part. So let's put him in. Done. This is getting quite exciting, guys. There she is. Right. Slide into here. I have some nice long screws. Unfortunately, they're countersunk, but it's the only ones I've got at the moment that's got the coarse Whitworth thread. And if I put them, put a washer underneath them, they will, they probably will do the job. Now, as I've um, showed you this before, split screwdrivers, split blade. Put him in, push him up, and wonderful thing to be able to hold on to slotted screws. Now, I don't know whether you can still buy these screwdrivers. They are absolutely brilliant for this old gear. Obviously, uh, not needed for Phillips anymore, but for slotted, they're brilliant. Don't over tighten screws into Bakelite. Word of advice. Okay. The front is looking okay. Everything's nice. All our shafts are centered. Looking good. Okay, fitting in nicely. Just fits in a just a little groove right around the edges. Next thing, these things. Yeah, they're being uh, they were a little bit rusty on the the retaining rings. Let's up the audio level a little, a little bit there. They were a little bit rusty on the retaining rings. So what I've done is um, I'm just soaking them in a little bit of rust inhibitor and we'll polish, polish up the knobs and then we're getting very close to a finished radio. I have the meter. Set it on amps because I want to measure the current drawer of this thing when it's going. Right. Hooked up in line with the 6 volt DC, not 12, 
not 240, six volt radio. Now, I shall turn the power supply, uh, just make sure he's off. The power supply is now on, six volts. Let's see what this old girl's going to do. I feel the vibration. Vibrator's working nicely. 0.9 amps, about 980 milliamp. One, one amp. Oh, how was that? A man's been charged with murder following an investigation into an alleged fatal stabbing on the New South Wales Central Coast. And we have tone control, which is very little bass or hardly any, and very bassy. So we've more or less got, we've got very low, we've got treble, and we've got a bit of both. There's a um, bit bassy and, and treble there. Volume control. Business school says there's no reason to not have more protection. Working lovely. And we we won't get anything else here in the shed. Now we are drawing just a bit over an amp, one amp for this old girl at six volts. Now, if I switch this so the, the lights are on as well, I don't know whether you can, you can't actually see that. I'll uh, switch some lighting off and we you may be able to see it, possibly not. Hey, light off, light on. So, with the light on, we're looking at 1.3 amps. So, Six volt battery, you work it out for yourself. If you've got uh, a 50 amp hour battery, you're going to get 25, 30 hours out of it, maybe. Um, if that, say, call it 20 hours. We have shortwave. We're getting a lot of rubbish in here. So, there she is, drawing just a little bit over one amp at the moment. That's our current draw, which is... Very proud of that. In sport, the Hobart Hurricanes will take on the... Quite incredible for... Um, a radio this size, and um, yeah, I thought, actually, I thought the vibrator would actually draw more than the one amp by itself. So we're looking at uh, a bit over one amp there, and if I put the dial lamps on, both dial lamps there, we go up to about 1.3, so we're looking about uh, 290, 280 milliamps, which is about right, about 140 milliamp each, each lamp. So we can leave him off and at the age of just 14. Fremantle, Sean this is very impressive. Now, I've got another little trick that I wanted to share with you. Just while this will turn it off. Well, disconnect the meter and we will just go back to... The radio cable. Okay. This is power in. Six volts. Not 12, not 240. Six. It just so happens I've got a six volt lead acid battery here. A little little gel cell lead, lead acid thing. Let's see what happens. Let's see. Can we power this old girl? Positive. 
positive. Okay, so all we've got here, six volt battery. I hear, I hear the vibrator. <laughs> And there she is. She's coming up. Closer to Christmas Day. It's getting closer and closer. I must have a an aerial hustle here somewhere. In the next few days, they're going to be busy as well. So we're just taking years traveling away over the There we go. Running off the six volt battery. Running like a dream. Wow, what a radio. Just, yeah, it's been a long process, this one, but we've finally got there. I've learned lots and lots and lots of things uh, about what you want to watch on YouTube too and what to cut out and what is boring and all sorts of things. And I'm probably, sometimes I'll put a bit too much in there anyway. But this is working Absolutely wonderful. I am so stoked with this radio. This has been such a big project. It's it's incredible. And all that working off a battery. Anyway, we're, we can now call this project complete. Now, another thing that I will be doing with this that I'll um, just probably show you is down the track anyway, is I'm going to create a 240 volt, um, just a six volt power supply. Now, what I've found is uh, I want to keep it in uh, old school, so analog, none, none of this rubbish um, switch mode plug pack things. So what I want to do is I'll show you. And here it is, an old CB power supply out of the 70s. Um, I think it's rated at, uh, do, 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 I think it's three or four amps, actually. I think it's rated at three amps. Two amps continuous, and I think it's three amps peak. So get rid of the rubbish off here. i am um, be mounting a probably an LM338 regulator onto here um, just, to, just to give me a very basic 6-volt power supply. And that way we can plug this old girl either into mains, as it is there, or we can use a battery. So either way, um, this will this will come up. Either way, we can run this old girl off what we want. On the front here, I'll probably do a little bit nicer front panel and sort of get the feel of the radio on the front of the panel here. But anyway, I'll share that with you later. Um, we won't record doing this one it's a normal everyday linear power supply there's that many people on youtube building power supplies and repairing power supplies so i don't want to be another one so anyway when we get that finished i'll share it and you can see how it all ends up but in the meantime guys there it is a finished christmas present christmas project Let's get this out of the road. There she is. A nice, a very, very nice old radio. Just, just undo that. There he is. We can also put a couple of pins in there and and again i did try that but i did well we did record it but i had no sound aerial power that's it the red material come up quite nice an old t-towel well actually it's not old 
it's a new tea towel from Spotlight. So um, a, a red tea towel it makes brilliant makes brilliant um, a speaker a speaker grill cloth. Okay, there she is, guys. Thank you very much for watching this for well, all the comments, all the hours that you've spent watching this one. I hope the next one's as as exciting. Um, it's the next one may be a little bit different. It may be a radio. It may not. I don't, I'm not real sure. Just at, uh, we've got a couple of projects on the go. So thank you very much for subscribing and liking me videos. It makes a big difference to us, especially the sus subscribers. And I'd like to wish you all a very Merry Christmas or Happy Holidays, as some guys have. And we will see you on the next video, which will be just around the corner. Won't be quite as complicated as this one. So, well, probably won't go back to a rusty old chassis on the next one. But you never know. Okay, until next time, it's bye for now.